Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Ishikesh. In this video, I will cover the topic of infective endocarditis in 10 minutes only. This is a must know topic and a previous year topic for all the entrance examination, NEET PG, INI and FMG. This will be helpful for the MBBS final year students also. So coming directly to the video. So friends, first of all, we will see what is infective endocarditis. Basically, it is the infection of the valvular endocardium or the intracardiac devices. So if MCQ asks what is intracardiac devices infection called, then also it is infective endocarditis. Now MCQ may ask what is the first hit in the uh, pathogenesis of infective endocarditis. Then the answer is injury to valvular endocardium. So the etiology of the infective endocarditis may, may be from the following congenital causes like mitral valve prolapse and mitral regurgitation, degenerative causes like arterial stenosis, uh, in IV drug abusers, uh, especially the tricuspid valve are involved in the rheumatic causes, especially the mitral valves are involved. So these are the etiology. Now coming to the pathogenesis of the infective endocarditis. See friends, the pathogenesis of the infective carditis is following. Once the valves are injured, then it will form a fibrin platelet aggregate. And after bacteremia occurs in the body, it will lead to the vegetation. Now what are the causes of the bacteremia in the body? The MCQ may mention dental procedures like tooth extraction or respiratory tract procedures like tonsillectomy or any traumatic causes. This will lead to the bacteremia in the body and combined with the fibrin platelet aggregate, it will lead to the vegetation formation. So this is the pathogenesis part you must know for the infective endocarditis. Now friends coming to the organisms that are involved in infective endocarditis. I have compiled all the one-liners from this section and it is a must know for your entrance examination. First of all, the most common cause of the infective endocarditis is Staph aureus. Now coming to the uh, subsections from it, that is from the native valve endocarditis and prosthetic valve endocarditis. In case of native valve endocarditis, we have two scenarios. Either it can be of subacute type or acute type. In case it is of acute type, then the answer will be Staph aureus. In case if it is subacute type, then the answer will be Streptococcus viridiens type. Now coming to the prosthetic valve. In again, in this case, there are two scenarios. In prosthetic valve, we will see the duration if it is of less than one year or greater than one year. Basically, less than 12 months or greater than 12 months. In case it is less than 12 months, then the answer will be cons. Basically, co coagulase negative staph aureus, that is staph epidermidis. Now, in case if it is greater than 12 months, then the case scenario will be like native valve endocarditis only. Also, a special mention about two cases that is IV drug abuses. I have already mentioned that the valve affected will be tricuspid and the organism most common is staph aureus. In case of CIED, basically cardiac implantable electronic devices, the answer will be cons. In any of the uh, electronic devices, if implanted in the body, mostly the answer will be cons, that is staph epidermis. Now friends, coming to the classification of native valve endocarditis, whether it is of acute type or subacute type. Remember friends, in acute bacterial endocarditis, the clinical scenario will be mentioning acute onset, fulminant progression and already I have mentioned the most common causes is Staph aureus and it will be mainly affecting the healthy native walls. Now, in case of subacute bacterial endocarditis, the uh, onset will be insidious in uh, nature and the most common cause I have already mentioned that is Viridian Streptococci and the effective walls will be uh, only in the native walls but with a history of prior injury in the walls. So, this is an important table you must remember for your clinical scenarios. So now friends coming to the main part of this topic that is modified due criteria for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis. Simply the MCQ may ask what is the clinical criteria used for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis and the answer will be modified due criteria. Modified due criteria have major criteria, minor criteria and pathological criteria. In major criteria the first point is positive blood culture with the typical organism that we have discussed earlier. And the condition that must satisfy is that you should have greater than two positive blood cultures that are drawn 12 hours apart. And if you draw three uh, blood cultures, then all of them, or if you draw four or more than four blood cultures, then majority of them should be positive for the organism. Friends, one question that you must know from this section is single positive culture will lead to the diagnosis of infective endocarditis for which of the organism and that is coxella. So you must know that in case of coxella, one positive culture will lead to the diagnosis of the infective endocarditis for the major criteria. Also, you should remember that the characteristic echo findings and new valvular regurgitations are also included in the major part only. 
Now friends coming to the minor criteria. In minor criteria, predisposing conditions like underlying heart abnormality or IV drug abuse is used. Uh, and the second point is fever greater than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degree Fahrenheit. And there are certain vascular abnormalities and immunological phenomena that I will discuss. And the microbiology part that is positive blood culture not fulfilling the major criteria. Friends, the pathological criteria as from the name is clear that you should demonstrate the uh, organism on culture or histology. So for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis, either you can go with the two major criteria or one major three minor or all of the five minor criteria. And if you have single positive pathological criteria that it and then it will lead to the diagnosis of infective endocarditis because you have simply proved it on histological basis or culture basis so 2 13 5 these three numbers you must remember for the diagnosis of infective uh, endocarditis now friends coming to some of the important points for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis and first one is you should draw 20 ml blood for one culture and the culture that you will draw it should include anaerobic as well as aerobic Part. Now, as I have mentioned, for a single culture, you the answer is coxalab, and the most common imaging that we used is echo, and the first investigation imaging investigation is also transthoracic echo. But it, if the question MCQ asks the best imaging investigation, then transesophageal echo is the best. Now, the two most important parts is vascular phenomena and immunological phenomena. For this, I have made a mnemonic also. See friends, in vascular phenomena, what are included? You must remember that embolic part, embolic manifestations are included in vascular phenomena. And in immunological part, the immune complex mediated clinical features are included here. So what are the embolic phenomena in infective endocarditis? It can lead to stroke, it can lead to renal infarct, it can lead to mycotic aneurysm if asked for the vascular phenomena, embolic phenomena. And one must point that you must remember is Janeway lesion and Osler nodes. For Janeway lesions, the clinical feature will be painless palm lesions and it is because of the microembolization. So for vascular phenomena, the answer is Janeway lesion and for immunological phenomena, the answer is Osler nodes and Osler, O, ouch and for Osler, you should remember that it is painful and are uh, present on the tips of the fingers. And for other immunological phenomena, you must remember the mnemonic of Rome. R for Roth spots, O for Oslers that I have already mentioned, O, ouch, Osler nodes, immunological phenomena, immune complex mediated phenomena present on fingertips, while the Janeway lesions that are vascular phenomena that are because of the microembolization are present on the palms and soles. And for M, the MPGN, that is membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. This is the modified due criteria you must remember 2, 13 and 5. These are the mnemonic for diagnostic criteria and Rome for immunological, O for ouch and O for Osler nodes, immunological phenomena and vascular phenomena, Janeway lesions. These are the must know points from this part. Now friends coming to the treatment part for the infective endocarditis. In case of native valve endocarditis, we will give vancomycin plus a beta lactam. And in case of prosthetic valve endocarditis, you will add centamycin plus rifampin to the combination of vancomycin plus beta lactam. Basically, you will be giving four medications for prosthetic valve endocarditis that is venco, beta, gentamicin, and rifampin. Now, now friends, coming to the last part, but questions are asked from this part that is prophylaxis of infective endocarditis. So, what are the indications? Any history of infective endocarditis in past? And in case of prosthetic wall, in case of congenital heart disease. Now, there are scenarios in congenital heart disease. For synoptic cases, all the untreated synoptic congenital heart patients will be given prophylaxis. In case of treated synoptic congenital heart patients, in the first six months, we will give prophylaxis. In case of all the congenital heart patients, whether it is of asynoptic or synoptic, if you treat them and there are residual defects like regurgitation or eco masses are present, then you will give a uh, prophylaxis for them. And last is valvulopathy in cardiac transplant patients. Now the question is when you will be giving this prophylaxis then. So in case of dental procedures that I have mentioned earlier like tooth extraction in case of invasive procedures like uh, abscess drainage or cardiac implantable electronic devices placement in the body then you will give this prophylaxis and what is the regimen basically you will give amoxicillin or ampicillin 
and you will give it 30 to 60 minutes earlier to the procedure and if the patient is allergic to the uh, regimen then you will give clindamycin for this patient okay need so this is all you need to know for the infective endocarditis and this will take care of most of the questions that are asked in the entrance examinations now friends one question regarding this topic one mcq regarding this topic and the differences you can see on the screen uh, i will be telling you the answer in the next video till then you can comment the answer in the comment section and if you like the video do share and subscribe the channel i will be making high yield topics previous year topics in 10 minutes for your entrance examination that will help to improve your rank Thank you for watching till here. Goodbye.